Hello and welcome to lecture number eight in this lecture series on CCNA2 routing and switching essentials with me, Joachim Schäverstad from the University of Skövde. And the topic that we reached today is Dynamic Host Control Protocol or DHCP. So what we're going to do is that we're going to look through operations, configurations and troubleshooting for DHCP for IP version 4 and version 6. And we're also going to look at Slack for uh, an IPv6, which is a way to automatically assign IP ad IPv6 addresses without even using a DHCP server. So let's dig right into it and look at DHCP for IPv4. And I'm going to describe this at a little bit of a overview level because I guess that many of my students already know about most of this stuff. And this is primarily for my students, of course. So uh, DHCP, why do we need this? Well, uh, DHCP is a protocol that is used for automatic IP configuration. And the idea is that whenever a client comes in line on a network, instead of having to configure IP settings, uh, manually on that machine, the client can lease uh, IP configuration from a server. Uh, and it's also possible to send along uh, additional information using DHCP. For instance, you can do configuration for Netboot, DNS server, and even more. So why would you want to do this? Well, maintaining IP addressing manually, that's cumbersome work because, well, first of all, it's boring. Consider a network where you have like 2,000 devices. It's not a fun thing to configure IP addressing manually on each of and every one of those devices. Uh, also, it's quite boring work, and it's easy to make configuration mistakes, and as you should know by now, if you have two devices using the same IP address on one single network, well, then conflicts are gonna occur, and that's not good. So let's start by looking at how uh, DHCP actually work by examining the packages that are sent back and forth between a client and a server. So whenever a client comes up to a network and it ha it's configured to use DHCP to get IP addressing, what it does is that, is that it sends a DHCP discover package and it sends a broadcast. So it has to be sent as a broadcast because the client doesn't have uh, an IP address yet and it's not aware of what network it's on. So it sends a broadcast saying, hey, I would like to request an address. And any DHCP server on the network is going to answer, and it's also going to answer with a broadcast, and the package type is DHCP offer. And what it says is, hi, I am a DHCP server, here is an address that I can offer. Uh, and this is also sent as, an, as a broadcast, and the idea here is that uh, the DHCP operation has to inform other possible DHCP servers that it's offering an address, so that uh, multiple addresses are not being offered to different clients. Finally, the client sends a DHCP request saying, hey, I accept the offer, and it's also sent as a broadcast, and then there is a DHCP accent from the server to the client. Uh, so that's the in initial packages. And looking deeper at the uh, at the operation, so you should really emphasize this, that the the first offer pack, the first request or discover package is sent as a, uh, as a as a broadcast package and it's sent to the destination MAC of all FFs, so that's the layer two broadcast address, and it's sent over UDP 64 and other nice stuff that you may not have to know about. So what we wanna do is basically take this very uh, overview look on how the DHCP protocol works and we're going to go into how we can configure it on a Cisco router. So in a normal network there will be a DHCP server and depending uh, on your setup the, it can be a server, uh, it can be a router and it can be running on a switch as well if you want to. So let's just get to the configuration part. So the first thing we, we want to do is to choose what addresses that shouldn't be uh, be leased to clients. So now we're configuring a DHCP server and on a network we typically have some addresses that are statically assigned. So for instance the router in the network, the default gateway, will have a statically assigned IP address and there might be a printer with a statically assigned IP address and there might be some servers or whatever. So what we have to do first is to exclude addresses with the IP DHCP excluded address command and this uh, informs the router about a range or single individual IP addresses that should not be leased out to clients. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is to create a pool of IP addresses and what we do then is that we use the command IP DHCP pool and a pool name to go into the pool uh, configuration mode. And then we configure the options that we have uh, and what we do then is that we begin with configuring what addresses that we're going to lease out. So in this case 
what we see here is a command saying network 192.168.10.0.255.255.255.0. And what that means is that we will lease out addresses in the 192.168.10 network. Uh, then we can also supply, as we said, uh, other configuration settings like the default gateway. We do that with the default router command. We can supply a DNS server to use with the DNS server command. And domain name in this example will tell the client what domain it's on and it will be used, for instance, to, uh, well, to know what domain you're on so you can uh, is to ease communication with domain names within the domain. <laughs> Uh, the effect of this configuration, that is that the router can now assign IP addressing to on the interface that is connected to 192.168.10.0. So any client on that network uh, that sends a DHCP a discover package will get an offer from this router. Uh, so how do we verify our settings? So the first command you need to know about is show IP DHCP bindings. And what that will do is that it will di display active leases. Uh, so whenever a client is leasing an address from the DHCP server, there will be an entry that is shown by using that command. Uh, there is also show IP DHCP server statistics, and you can use that to verify that the router is sending and re receive DHCP package. So you can sort of use those commands to see that the DHCP server is offering as uh, expected. And on a final look, note, before we do the demonstration of this lecture, you should know that DHCP requests, those are broadcasts, and will as such not go outside of the local LAN. Uh, however, it's quite common that you uh, configure a DHCP server to be in a, a server network that is not on the same local area network as the clients. And in this case, you need to have the uh, local router, the default gateway of the clients, relay the DHCP requests to the D DHCP server that's in another network. And the command to do that is by configuring IP helper address and the DHCP server IP on the interface. And then you configure the router to for DHCP relaying. And that means that DHCP requests uh, and also TFTP, DNS, uh, boot P, time information, TACX, and NetBIOS will be forwarded to, to that server. Um, and you can also uh, configure a router interface to get IP from DHCP, and then you use the IP address DHCP command instead of IP address and the IP address you want. I'm not sure why you want to, ha want to have a router configured with DHCP, but you can if you want to. So on that note, let's go for an early demo. So we have a nice topology here. Um, and what we have is a DNS server up here, we have an internet, and we have uh, three routers and a client LAN. So what we want to do here is that we want to uh, configure router 2 to be the DHCP server for the local area network with PC1 and the local area network with PC2. So let's see here, we have a nice table uh, where we're going to start configuring router 2. So the way that we're going to configure router 2 is that we're going to make a pull for the two local area networks. And what we're doing then is that we go enable, we do configure terminal, and first we're going to do this, uh, this uh, excluded address. So we're going to exclude all the address that we don't want to share using DHCP. But first off, we need to know about what networks that are in question. So the networks that we care about is this network, the 30 network, oops, and the 10 network. And actually, in this case, the only addresses that we have to exclude will be the router interface addresses, the default gateways. So the default gateways are on dot one, the first address in each subnet here. So that's what we do. So we go IP, DHCP, excluded address, and then we just type them in. So it's 192.168.10.1, and then it's also dot, it also 30.1. So next thing then, we're going to do our pools. So let's start with a pool for the network connected to PC1. So we go IP, DHCP, and you can see the different options we have. And we go pool. And let's call this PC1 pool. So now we're in the DHCP configuration mode, and there is a number of things that we can do. So first, we're going to do the network command. The network command decides the range of IP addresses that we lease out. And in this case, let's just lease out the full network, 192.168.10.0. And then it's 255.255.255.0. We will also need 
a default gateway. So we do default router. And in this case, it's the first address in the network. So it's 192.168.10.1. And that's it. And let's also supply a DNS server. And the DNS server IP address should be in the table here. Uh, and it is. So it's 192.168.10.1. Dot twenty dot two five four. So that's basically it. So let's do another pool for the other local area network here. So we go again IP DHCP pool and we call it PC two pool. And again with a network command, but in this case, let's actually make sure no, let's not do anything silly. So at one nine two one six eight dot thirty dot Zero, two, five, five, two, five, five, two, five, five, zero. Let's just do it as intended. And again, uh, we do a default gateway or a default router as it's called here. 192.168.30.1 being the router in this local area network. And then again, let's find the DNS server command because the DNS server is the same. So this is actually the, D the DHCP server uh, for those two local area network being, uh, being configured. So now that we configured the DHCP server, there's one more thing that we have to do. So see here that we have PC1 and PC2, and whenever one of those is going to send out a DHCP discover, that will be sent out as a broadcast. So it will die on router one or router three. So what we have to do before we can move on is that we have to configure the router one and router three for DHCP relaying, and we do that using this IP helper interface command. So IP helper address. So what we do is that we go into the create interface of router one, which is gigabit ethernet zero zero. And we do so we do that interface gigabit ethernet zero zero. And we just go IP helper helper address and the IP address is 10.1.1.2. And with this configuration, router one is instructed to send on packages coming into this interface uh, as DHCP to router two. So let's go into PC1, and what we're just going to do is that we're going to uh, enforce a DHCP discovery. So we just do that by going into desktop IP configuration, and then we go static, and then we go DHCP. And we're just going to have to wait a little while, and as you see here, it's scanning its IP address 192.168.10.2, the correct subnet mask, a default gateway, and the DNS server address that we configured. So let's just do the same thing on router three. So again, I guess it's gigabit ethernet zero zero. Let's just go in and verify that in the running configuration. So we do enable, we do configuration terminal, and then we go do show IP interface brief. And we can see that it is indeed here, gigabit ethernet zero zero that is configured for that subnet. So what we do is that we go interface, gigabit ethernet zero zero and then we do IP helper address and we can just go with the same one again so we go 10 now we go 10 to 2 2 so we use the correct IP address then we go down to the client here and if we go to desktop you'll see that when we switch to DACP we're gonna wait a little while and then it's getting its IP address so let's just go into router 2 and, and we're going to check here that if we go exit we can do a show IP DHCP bindings and you can see here that this router has leased out two IPv4 addresses in those uh, in those subnets so that's all well and nice and uh, now there is one thing more thing that uh, Cisco wants us to do in this lab and that is to configure gigabit ethernet uh, 01 of router 2 to get its IP through the IP address to DHCP. So let's go do that. So what we do is that we do a configuration terminal and then we do interface gigabit ethernet 01 and then we do IP address and instead of typing an IP address we just do as we, you see we can here DHCP. And we should also do the no shutdown to enable the interface. So now if I go do show IP interface brief, you can see that gigabit ethernet 00, zero actually, no 0, 01, okay, it did not yet get an IP address. So let's try again. Okay, it's not getting an IP address. So I did what I was expected to do. Maybe there is somewhere that I have to enable a DHCP server, gigabit ethernet 00. zero. Which one is that? 
zero, zero. So it's this one. So I guess then that the DNS server here should also be acting as a DHCP server and it's off. So let's make this one a DHCP server real quick, just to make sure that it works. So the default gateway for this network should be, okay, this is a little bit troublesome because we don't really know that. Uh, so let's do it as 192.168.20.1 and hope that the server gets that. Uh, we don't need that. So the start IP will be one and we're just hoping for the best. So with that done, let's go into router two. Now uh, let's go do show IP interface brief. And now you can see that it got an IP address, which is nothing like the, the IP address that we wanted it to have, but it's still got an IP address. So this is the trouble of using IP DHCP to configure routers, uh, but at least now it did get it. So I guess that the DHCP server is not configured to use that. Uh, what was it, 231 address as, as a default gateway, but let's configure it to do that. Yep, 231. So now we're gonna, gonna see if we have connectivity between PC2 and the DNS server. The first one should fail. Let's try again. It's actually not working and that's probably because there is some configuration mistakes or something weird within the routed network here that we didn't touch. So what we showed here was DHCP assignment and we showed that the DHCP assignment doing DHCP pools and relaying worked and we also configured router two to get one of its, its interfaces from DHCP. So let's just be happy about it. And let's end this lecture by going back to the theory and let's look at how we can do DHCP using IPv6. That's something that we will do just in theory and you can do the demo if you want to. So we did get a little bit of troubleshooting going here, but before we go to DHCP version six, uh, let's do a word. So there are different some different troubleshooting tasks that you should do when stuff doesn't work. So the first one is to resolve address conflicts. And that is looking at this with what addresses you excluded and make sure that you didn't configure any address uh, that's in your pool to be leased out as an address that the, that the servers may use uh, or that can be leased so, so that you didn't uh, statically configure any IP address on a device and then lend out the same IP address. Also, you of course need to verify physical connectivity. Uh, if stuff doesn't work, if a client is still not getting connectivity, what you should do is test assigning it with the static IPv4 address. And then of course verify switchboard configuration and VLAN configurations. So that's basically it. DHCP, if it doesn't work, test the entire network. So let's move on to IPv6. and. Um, in addition to using DHCP, the global unicast address in IPv6 can be configured fully automatically. As you know, the link local addresses, those are always assigned automatically, basically, unless you, um, unless you explicitly assign them. But you can also use uh, the Slack process to configure global unicast addresses. And this works by uh, using ICMP version 6. And there are some packages that we have to know about. So this will be clear in the next sli slide. But first we have the router solicitation messages that are sent by clients to routers. And then we have the router advertisements that are sent re in return by the router and will include a prefix to use, a prefix length and optional uh, other optional information. So this router advertisement can basically work like the DHCP server. So a client will actually compute the host part of the address and will have a working IPv6 configuration. And this is the Slack process then. So the host por portion of the MAC address is actually derived from the client MAC uh, or as a random value and deriving it from, Mac, from the MAC that is called the EUI64 process. So let's look at the package, um, the package going back and forth here. So what happens when the client actually enters a network and is configured to use IPv6 is that it will send a all router multicast router solicitation message. And what it's going to say is that, hey, I'm up here. I need a router advertisement from a router. And the router then will send back the router advertisement saying, okay, here is a prefix, a prefix length, and so on and so forth. And it's going to do this using the all node multicast. Uh, and what happens then is that the client says, oh, nice. And then it's going to compute its full global unicost IPv6 address. And before it's done, it's going to do the DAD or the duplicate address detection process, which 
uh, is a node multicast that's going to be sent out the local network and say, hey, is this IPv6 already used? And if it doesn't get a reply, it's going to say, okay, that's nice. So there is also a way to, uh, there is still a use for DHCP or as an alternative to this Slack process, you can use DHCP version six uh, in different ways. So you can use it either stateless or stateful. So the process is still the same that the client, whenever it comes along, is going to send this router solicitation message and say that it needs a router advertisement. But actually you can configure the router to send one of three different uh, router advertisements back. So the first one is Slack only, uh, that's the default option. And then the router says, okay, here's the information you, know, you need, get going. Then you can also do stateless DHCP and stateless DHCP is informing the client that, okay, use this router advertisement to calculate your IPv6 address, but then you should contact a DHCP version six server to get other options such, such as DNS and default gateway and all of that. Or you can go stateful DHCP six and then you would use DHCP only. So then the router would respond to the router solicitation saying, uh, okay, here's the router advertisement. Don't use in the information in here. Instead, go to the DHCP version six server that's going to give you your address. So uh, moving on uh, and take another few words on Slack. So Slack is the default setting on Cisco routers. Uh, so this means that the clients will only use the RA message or the router advertisements for the IPv65 configuration or the IPv6, of course. Uh, so it will get the address, the default gateway, the DNS server settings and the maximum transfer unit from the router advertisements. Uh, and if you want to do those DHCP modes, uh, the DHCP mode is controlled by setting the managed and other config flags on an interface. So this is just two flags that are called managed and other config and setting them to zero will tell the router to use Slack. So if you configured any other mode, what you would do is just basically go no IPv6 ND managed config flag and no IPv6 ND other config flag to set those flags to zero. So if you want to do stateless or stateful, uh, the stateless DHCP v6 mode tells the clients, as we said, to get addressing from the uh, router advertisement, but other information from the DHCP version six server. So for this mode, you set the other conflict fig flag to one, and you do that by going IPv6 and the other conflict flag. And if you want to do stateful mode where the router advertisements informs the clients to get all the IP configuration from the DHCP server, well, then you set the, then you set manage config flag to one, and you do that by IPv6 and the and manage config flag. So that's it. So looking a little bit in action, how this would work with stateless and stateful um, DHCP is that whenever a PC comes up, what will happen first is that it sends its router solicitation message and then it gets, gets the uh, router advertisement back. And depending on what a router advertisement says, then the client may have to get some or all configuration from a DHCP server. So whether it has to get everything or yes, some, what it's going to do is that it will send a solicit to all the DHCP version six servers, and then it's get, get an advertise back with the configuration it needs or the suggested configuration. And it gets this as a unicast. And then it sends a request or an information request in return. So if it's a full uh, stateful DHCP server, it does the request and it's state, if it's stateless, it does the information request unicast back to the server. And then it gets a reply saying, okay, good to go use the server uh, or use this addressing. So how do we configure this? Well, to, the first thing we have to do whenever we want to do IPv6 stuff is to enable IPv6 routing. We do that with the command IPv6 unicast routing in global configuration mode. Then we configure a pool. And instead of going IP DHCP pool, of course we do IPv6 DHCP pool and a pool name. So then we express our network doing the, uh, the prefix and the prefix length. We can also uh, actually configure lifetime and lifetime is how long the lease will be active. And then what we do finally is we do the DNS server and domain name if we want to do those, those things. Remember that in DHCP, the common way to get the default gateway is by using the link local address of the local router. So you don't have to configure that. Uh, and then the pool is done. 
So what we have to do next is actually that we have to configure DHCP version 6 on the interface. So what we do is we go interface type number, so we get into the interface configuration mode, and then we actually have to explicitly configure this interface to use the DHCP pool. That's the difference from IPv4. So what we do is IPv6 DHCP server and the pool name, and then finally we have to set the managed or uh, or other config flag depending on, we, on if we want stateful or stateless uh, IPv6 DHCP. So, uh, getting towards the end, verification and troubleshooting, uh, again we can use show IPv6 DHCP bindings to display active leases or show IPv6 DHCP pool to ver verify that DHCP service is running. If we want to do DHCP relaying, what we do is that we use the IPv6 DHCP relay destination uh, and then the address of the DHCP server. So this, th this time you also configure it on the interface level. And then the troubleshooting part is of course the same as for IPv4. Make sure the DHCP server is running, make, make sure that there is connectivity between the client and the, D and the DHCP server. So I'm not going to do an ending demo for this. Instead, I suggest you to do the skills integration in 8.3.1.2 that will cover almost the entire course. With that said, I'll see you next time for some cool network address translation. Goodbye.
uh, being configured. 